Hey, it's Wendell. This is level one and I'm back again to put on my technology wish list. Well, not really. We need to talk about SRIOV, which is the technology that you didn't even know you needed, but you need. You know how if you love something, you gotta let it go sometimes? Well, this is the Radeon Fire Pro 7150. This is an older card. There's one generation back, but I got my hands on this and it supports a technology called SRIOV. This means that uh, that technology that's in that graphics card allows that physical hardware to be shared by more than one operating system or by more than one virtual machine. And it works brilliantly. So with this one graphics card, you can run Linux games and Windows games or both at the same time, no problem. In fact, it's uh, really well supported in virtual machine farms, you know, VMware farms, stuff like that, uh, where you might be running a bunch of Linux desktops or Windows desktops or whatever. In fact, this one explicitly supports up to 16 um, sort of video accelerated virtual machines under VMware. So all those VMs share the resources of a single card. SRIOV does not seem to me to be in a great state in the industry right now. NVIDIA seems to be dominating and to see what that's all about I've got some more these are Tesla V100 cards these cards are great for machine learning or sharing graphics resources across a ton of virtual machines both of these cards are insanely crazy expensive so far in my lab I've got this guy running eight Raspberry Pis with uh, Skyrim and that's from a single V100, and I have two of these. I mean, that's cool, and that's coming in another video. But the NVIDIA approach here is to use GRID. And GRID, NVIDIA GRID, it requires licensing. Yes, yes, once you've bought a $10,000 graphics card, you also have to go run a license server and some other stuff. But that wasn't always the case, but it is now. And if you run VMware, there's also costs associated with VMware and the licensing and all the stuff that goes full. I mean, it's really awesome. And it's really cool technology, but the expense here means that this is technology that is largely relegated to like finance and government and any kind of sectors that require high assurance that information is not leaving the machine. Uh, Grid is also not SRIOV. It's not an open standard. So I can't use this type of one GPU many clients thing on Linux at all. In fact, even if I try to run multiple standalone NVIDIA graphics cards, at least the GeForce cards at virtual machines, NVIDIA has taken steps in the driver to detect that it's running in a virtual machine and block that ability with code 43. Google Stadia, you know, the cloud gaming thing is going to pack a ton of GPUs in the cloud, render them, you know, in the cloud and then stream the output to you. And that's very, very similar to this kind of VDI infrastructure. The difference is they're going to be using AMD GPUs, very similar to this probably. Now, it's shockingly awesome being able to run Skyrim and other stuff on a Raspberry Pi. And the latency is really not terrible, at least on the LAN. I haven't been able to get it working as well with SRIOV as I have been with Grid. It should be the case that I can essentially have the same setup with mostly open source software, or at least more open software, without the license requirements. So AMD's in a better position there in terms of like how they're positioning their card in the market. Now, these virtualized graphics cards don't have outputs. There's literally, there's nothing here. There's nowhere to plug in a monitor, but think about it. You know, SRIOV, the SRIOV technology does provide an interface where the output is dumped to a frame buffer or directly over PCI Express. We need something to pick up the output from the SRIOV graphics card. Well, good news, that's Looking Glass. Looking Glass is a cool piece of technology that I demoed quite a while ago. You can run two normal desktop graphics cards in a Linux box. You can give one to your Windows VM and then uh, display the output of that Windows VM graphics card on your host graphics card through a fast shared memory interface. So it's very similar to what SRIOV needs to do. Now you could plug in a second monitor to your GPU and see your virtual machine there. In fact, some graphics cards require you to have a dummy plug because it doesn't render correctly unless it thinks it's got a monitor physically attached because of the whole licensing BS thing. Now all Looking Glass does is mirror that output on that graphics card to your host through shared memory. Looking Glass is very powerful and very awesome and about 95% of what we need 
for an SRIOV solution that's more consumer oriented. It's also possible that software technologies like Lutris, you know, for example, configuration automation, Proton for Wine, and that's that kind of, well, Proton and Wine and stuff like that, DXVK, they're going to make it to where that you don't really need a full fat Windows VM in the future, maybe probably. But for me, the exciting thing is that SRIOV could enable things like a flat pack where you run the flat pack and it has its own graphics subsystem interface inside that or you know inside a snap or whatever so you've got a container that literally gets its own gpu that can be created or destroyed on command for as i know no one is working on that because sriov for consumers is not a thing yet but from what i know of the enterprise market mx gpu amd's thing is running on sriov technology and it's not currently doing as well as Nvidia's grid from what I understand. And even despite a much more favorable licensing term situation and setup from AMD, a lot of people are really upset with the licensing situation with Nvidia in the enterprise, but they're having to use it. I mean, and it turns out SRIOV for network cards actually works really well for VM applications. So I've found that SRIOV for graphics is just not heavily tested, even on AMD's own platforms. My experiments on Threadripper with the S7150 that few, if all, you know, I mean, there's not really any other clean way to say it, but on Threadripper, if you plug this card in and you enable SRIOV, the system's not going to post on just about every Threadripper motherboard. Now I'm working with MSI. The problem is that the PCIe ROM bar space is not available for the Kajillion graphics cards that this thing creates, even with above 4G decoding and, and all of the other stuff. It's just, it's not something that's well tested. Now SRIOV for network cards, that works fine on the Threadripper boards, but this is something different. And even for the one Threadripper system that I managed to get work, I had to do a BIOS mod to get it working. But with Nvidia's grid, there's no danger of any of that because the proprietary technology just doesn't work that way. But uh, that's bad because proprietary technologies mean that you've got one company that can essentially control the market with their API. So I think given all that, we've got a compelling case to ask AMD to enable SRIOV for on consumer cards. The PCIe ROM bar issue is probably less of a worry if you've got you know something that only has two virtual GPUs or maybe four virtual GPUs. Maybe the community could probably produce the code that we need to close the loop on the consumer side as well. I mean, looking glass is most of what we need. And I know that there are hooks in the Radeon Windows driver for everything else we need, things like UAC pop-ups and stuff like that. So I really think that if SRIOV is gonna survive in the industry, it's gonna need a kick in the pants. And I've got a good consumer application for it. There are dozens of us, <laughs> literally dozens. No, really, we've got a huge VFIO community on the Level 1 forum. Reddit has got a, another one. There are other websites that have cropped up. So I think it's time to set SRIOV free. Oh, and uh, Intel. <laughs> Intel has uh, got shockingly good SRIOV support for their iGPU. Now, right now, you've gotta jump through a lot of hoops to enable it. But the iGPU on an Intel system supports SRIOV. I think my impression of it, I don't know this to be true for sure, but my impression of it is that lower end Xeon SKUs like the Xeon 3 line, but where they have, some of them have integrated graphics, you know, at Computex last year, Intel was touting some of, maybe it was the year before, one of the, one of the Computexes either last year or the year before, Intel was talking about how even the Xeon 3 could manage, you know, encode and decode of video streams and they'd improve that and blah, blah, blah. Those are all iGPU functions, but those are things that would also be pretty well suited to containers or especially even serverless infrastructure where it's like somebody needs to convert a bunch of movies and like on Amazon, it's called a Lambda function. You might create a Lambda function that does your conversion. And so what that does is it creates a VM that does the work and then the VM's destroyed. And you have infrastructure like that, that companies like Intel are gonna have to help support in hardware in order for the Amazon business model to make sense. And so that kind of thing with the iGPU makes sense because you could have one iGPU running a whole bunch of tasks until it's basically maxed out. So given all that, like I say, I think the time for SRIOV on the desktop is basically at hand. We've got what we need on the Linux side. I am gonna try like heck to get this thing set up and working for Skyrim on Linux proper on Threadripper, hopefully. Now, Epic is no problem. Server motherboards are no problem. Like, it works fine there. It's a server platform. But I'm gonna try like heck to get it working on Threadripper. So that's uh, 
That's gonna be on the Linux channel though, so you're gonna have to stay tuned there. Woo doggies. All right, I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the level one forums. Oh, and if you have a, you know, a V340 or something you wanna to throw to the, you know, let me borrow for the, the testing or whatever. I mean, this is good, this is gonna do the job, and this is on loan from an anonymous benefactor. Thank you, anonymous benefactor, but uh, I need more, more. Probably also need a Quadro P5000 and stuff like that too. I mean, I'll buy it eventually, but uh, it's expensive. All right, I'll see you later.